Zack Pack, he's always there for you. Zack Pack, only on YouTube. Zack Pack, what will he do next? Zack Pack, let's find out, cause it's all Oh, hi. It's been a little while since we've last seen each other. It has been a very eventful past year and... Yeah, don't worry about him. Anyways, I definitely should talk about a game with you guys, but there's just so many games I have on my shelf that I don't even know where to begin or what I could really even talk about. If only there was an easy way to pick out a game for me to talk about. Well, my friend, you're in luck, because we're about to spin the Wheel of Choices. On this wheel are many games, some good and some not so good. Let's see what you get and take a spin at the wheel. Let's go. Just give it a second. It'll get there. No worries, I got all the time in the world. And your game is Super Mario Sunshine. Super Mario Sunshine, huh? Huh. Super Mario Sunshine. You know, I haven't played this game in a while. Well, maybe I should put her in the old GameCube and give it a shot. Super Mario Sunshine is the main Mario 3D platformer that came out on Nintendo's home console at the time, the Nintendo GameCube. It took a different approach compared to Super Mario 64. Rather than just using Mario's main moveset and expanding upon it from Super Mario 64, this game introduces a mechanic that has Mario spraying these tropical environments with a water pump that he's wearing on his back, made by Professor E. Gad. Say, this sounds a little familiar. Anyways, the story of this game is simple. Mario, Peach, and Toadsworth are all going on a much-needed vacation to a tropical island called Isle Delfino, and when they arrive, they find this nice tropical beach that they plan on going to has been covered in this goop-like paint that is completely polluting the beach and covering the sun-filled island in darkness. Yeesh, that sucks. This is almost as bad as the last vacation that I took. Please don't ask, I don't want to talk about it. Anyways, Mario finds this awesome water hose device named Flood and uses it to clean up the runway. His reward? Mario gets arrested, tried, and found guilty of graffitiing and polluting Isle Delfino, sits in a jail cell overnight, and is sentenced to clean up the whole island by himself. Man, a game where Mario gets arrested and convicted of a crime? Move over, GTA. This is the real deal. You know, as kids, you know, our parents let us play games like this where we're playing as a convicted criminal? <sighs> Man, we grew up rough. Well, we figure out pretty quickly that it actually isn't Mario guilty of this crime, but a shadowy doppelganger who immediately goes after Princess Peach and attempts to kidnap her, naturally, before escaping into the first world of the game being Bianco Hills. Right, now we're really going to get into this game. We're going to get all those shine sprites, stop Shadow Mario, and defeat Bowser once again. Let's get started. Bianco Hills is the first world in this game. Some of the objectives of this world are as simple as clearing up some goop to get a shine sprite, while some others are like fighting a PD Piranha. This world serves as a warm-up world to get you used to the game's mechanics. Oh, but this world introduces something that recurs throughout the whole entire game, being these secret levels. These are segments where Shadow Mario takes Flood away from Mario and you must perform a 3D platforming challenge. Thankfully, this one was quite easy, but as we'll see later on, they get quite difficult. Overall, this world really isn't too bad. It's a nice warm-up. Wow, we really rocked our way through Bianco Hills. Maybe I'm not that rusty after all. Let's continue. 
Rico Harbor is this game's second world, and boy oh boy this world picks up difficulty quite a bit. This world requires much more precision platforming to navigate. It is very easy to fall off the structures in this world, particularly from these wind gusty enemies, and when you get knocked off, you gotta start all over and work your way back up to where you were before. In this world, you do things like fight a giant blooper, twice, blooper surfing, another platforming chow- Whoa, 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 wait, blooper surfing? That's right, you surf on top of bloopers in this world, twice. The first time, you're going around a circuit. It's a pretty simple circuit to complete, and when you do, you get a shine sprite. The second time you do it, it is to collect eight red coins. Well, I did the circuit easy enough. Let's do the red coin collecting challenge. Mm. Mm. God dang it! Gah! The game glitched out on me! I'm stuck in the wall! What am I supposed to do here? Maybe turning will help me. Come on, come on, come on! Oh no, I can't see! Oh, and I didn't even mention the secret level in this world yet. This one was a pain for me. I just kept dying in the end part again, and again, and again, and again. Well, okay, you get the picture by now. Well, that's the second world down, and still lots to go. You see, this is definitely one of the harder 3D Mario games, as we're going to see it going along through the rest of this game. Anyways, let's move on to world number three. Well, the third world is Gelato Beach, and this world isn't too bad. Between defeating a Wiggler, flipping some mirrors, and swimming for red coins, this one isn't too bad. Oh, but eventually you get to race this guy in a Pianta costume named Piantissimo, and you better not mess up, because unless you've mastered the mechanics of the game, you've just barely got enough time to beat him, so you better not mess up. After Gelato Beach, we have the game's first main boss at Peanut Park. It's simple enough. Shoot the Mecha Bowser with your missiles, and spray the onslaught of bullet bills ready to kill you. Once you do that, Shadow Mario reveals himself as... Bowser's son. Leave my mama alone, you bad man. I won't let you kick Mama Peach away. Mama? mama? Peach is Bowser Jr.'s mama? How is that even possible? I... Oh, no, 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 no! Thing about Bowser and Peach getting all freaky with it? Oh man, this game definitely took some creative liberties with its story. Heck, Bowser Jr. and Princess Peach have full voice dialogue, and that goes for all of the characters in this game except for Mario. Anyways, now you can proceed to play the rest of Peanut Park. This world is pretty cool. It's basically a giant theme park. Between collecting some red coins on swinging pirate ships, to defeating turtles with shells that look like Yoshi eggs, to even stopping a ferris wheel that has gone rogue, this world is pretty fun, and I do like the theme park vibe of this world a lot. But I gotta say, the camera in the ferris wheel episode is absolutely atrocious. Trying to look around and figure out where you gotta go is made 10 times more difficult when the camera just keeps going behind a freaking wall! Then, after getting Yoshi to eat a pineapple stuck in a pipe, we move on to the next world, being Sirena Beach. This world is where things really started to get difficult for me. The first episode of this world, The Manta Storm, was one of the hardest missions for me to complete. Here, you have to defend Sirena Beach from Shadow Manta Rays that leave behind electric paint. I don't know why I found this one so difficult, I just kept getting knocked around and kept dying and dying. However, once this is completed, the Hotel of Sirena Beach comes back, and it leads to one of my favorite parts of the game. Oh yeah, this game goes full on Luigi's Mansion on us, because this hotel is infested with all these weird looking booths, but I must say, for as weird as they look, I actually kinda like them. They look all different and creepy, and just kinda my kind of vibe. I love them. In episode 2, where we get to explore the hotel, the main objective is to complete another one of those secret levels, without Flood. And again, I had a really hard time with this. This secret level is giving me a lot of troubles. Now, this is where one of my first main complaints about Super Mario Sunshine comes in. So, you collect these shines in a particular order. You go into a world, collect one, leave, then go for the next one, etc, etc. 
I'm not a fan of this structure because if there is a shine that is giving you trouble in a world, you can't just go and try for another one in that same world. You have to keep going until you eventually get it so that you can move forward. In games like Banjo-Kazooie, the world is completely open, allowing you to get your jiggies in whatever order you want, not dragging you out of the level whenever you collect one. So if you're struggling with the specific shine sprite, there's not really much that you can do unless you want to go into the hub world or one of the other worlds to collect other shine sprites that you missed, but you have to keep trying until you eventually succeed. Well anyways, once this shine is collected, the next couple episodes are devoting to exploring this awesome hotel, which includes breaking into people's rooms, sorry about that, and then we get to the big boss of this world, King Boo. Aw, heck yes, King Boo is my favorite Mario villain. It seems that every game King Boo is in, they seem to design him somewhat differently, so I wonder how Super Mario Sunshine's going to make him look. Holy crap, look at him! He's so... weird looking. I love it! His boss fight is pretty easy, just throw some hot peppers in his mouth, then whack him with fruit, and he's as good as gone, but overall, I absolutely love this world, even with the slightly frustrating start. I really warmed up to it in the end, it's just a whole vibe. Then we have Noki Bay. Honestly, I thought I would not like this world one bit, given that it's mostly underwater. But I actually didn't mind this world, I even quite liked the boss in this game, it's actually one of my favorites so far. Here, you're cleaning the teeth of this giant eel underwater. It seems like one of the most tedious boss fights ever on paper, but in practice and actually playing it, I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. Then, we reach probably what is my least favorite level in this game, Pianta Village. Hurting the little chomps wasn't that fun, and oh my god, that little Piantissimo. Here's the thing with him. Racing him is a pain, because if you lose the race to him, then you lose a life. So, if you are losing to him, it's better to just quit and reset. Which brings up another issue I have. Every time you die, the game kicks you out of the level and you have to go back in, select the episode, and go through the opening animations again. Is it too much to ask that when I die or just fail a mission that I just restart the mission right away instead of being kicked out outside of the level? Like, is that really too much to ask? Anyways, we race this little shit and you have to reach the flag before him to beat him. Come on, come on, come on! Beat that little Piantissimo Piantiso shit! <laughs> Are you kidding me? I so got to the flag before him! Look at that! That is complete nonsense! I so got there before him! Alright, you little shit. It's on like Donkey Kong! Thank you! Onwards. Since I haven't made it this far in Mario Sunshine since I was a kid, if I even did make it this far, my memory of this part of the game non-existent. So the rest of the episodes in this world I found really annoying because of it. The lava episode, it took me a while to figure out exactly where I needed to go and what I needed to do. I thought I had to get into the village by swimming up the creek, but that didn't work. I figured out I actually have to go below the level to get into the village. Then when I do that, what do I do? Wash away the lava? Nope. Defeat the birds dropping fire? Try again. Extinguish the fires on top of the mushrooms? Nope. You gotta wash the goop off of a singular pianta standing in a random spot. It took me a lot of trial and error to figure out that I had to spray that random pianta. Now, maybe there's a pianta somewhere in the level that I had to talk to that would have told me that's my objective, but that shouldn't matter. Objectives for each mission should be made very clear when you're going into the mission. It's just stupid that it didn't tell me that. The other episodes were equally as annoying. The Chain Chomp Bath mission was just kind of frustrating to control. And then this, the Secret of the Village Underside episode. Here, you have to rely on the Piantas throwing you where you need to go. Seems simple enough, but if the camera is facing even slightly in the wrong direction, you're flying off the stage. It was absolutely annoying to complete, and it was just the icing of the cake of this level being my least favorite. There, all the levels are complete. So the question is, how do I get to Bowser? 
Well, you actually have to defeat or beat the seventh episode in each world to unlock the Bowser fight. Now, in that seventh episode, you are chasing Shadow Mario in each and every single world. So, let's go and chase that shadowy prick 80s montage style. go. Now, we've unlocked the final battle. Now, there is something I should address here. I am not 100%ing this game. That would take me ages. But, there is one challenge I wanted to tackle while I do this run of Super Mario Sunshine. That is the Pachinko Machine. This level is known for its difficulty. Half because of the game's controls, and the other half because of the game's physics. It's brutal, but I wanted to give it a fair shot. Cow. Oh, come on. Oh. Okay, one more shot, but that's all I'm giving it before I move on to Bowser. Anyways, now we officially get to face up against Bowser in one final stage, Corona Mountain. At first, this level is not too hard, with some simple platforming that requires good timing, but then we reach this boat. This boat is the bane of my existence. At first, I had absolutely no clue how to control it. I would steer it left and right out of the back of the boat, but all it got me was death and despair. Well, get this. You should only use the back of the boat if you want to propel yourself forward by a lot. You will want to use the front left and front right sides of the boat to turn it more subtly without moving forward. Since this was a mechanic that I have not used in this game by this point, I was perplexed on how to do this, and even when I did figure it out, it was still hard because sometimes the boat just had a mind of its own. Once that's done though, the rest is honestly pretty easy. Just boost up to Bowser and start the final fight. That is still weird. Bowser actually talks in a Mario game? <sighs> this boss fight is deceptively easy. Just use the rocket boost, then ground pound on the weak points of the hot tub, and eventually, Bowser is defeated. So, there you have it. Super Mario Sunshine is beaten. Now, like I said, I did not 100% complete this game, and honestly, to me, that's the best way I can recommend this game. This game is a fun run through if you're not looking to get 100% everything. I mean, the pachinko machine and the blue coins are a testament to the annoyance of trying to 100% it. But if you just want to run through it casually and just have a good time, yeah, certain things may be a bit difficult, like the janky controls and the janky camera, but overall, it's still a really great 3D Mario game, and I do think it is overhated. Who could that be? It's a letter to I've won a vacation, but not to Isle Delfino, but to the Arabian Desert. <laughs> 